Okay, let's get this clown show on the road one more time. I think we might be on getting close to the last leg of this thing. The curves are not, it seem, don't seem to be quite as tight. Not sure though. We'll find out here in a little bit. Charles has slowed it down a little bit to allow me to keep him in sight. But you know what? He's fast enough that uh, it's not as easy as you think, just keeping him in sight. He rides a lot of crooked roads in his part of the world. But there's a lot of crooks in his part of the world, so I guess it would be crooked roads. That was a joke. Tell you what, he certainly gets around that, that motorcycle well. I think he does phenomenally for a man his age. 81 years old, folks. And he's hard to keep up with. Charles is riding, I think, a 2008 Suzuki Bandit 1250S. Mine's a 2001 1200S. And just from what I've seen, I think his is a tad faster than mine. I don't know how much on top end, but it's quicker getting there. That's for darn sure. I do know mine will run up faster than the law allows. Three or four years ago, I went to see him in Mississippi, and I I have positive proof on a GPS that this thing was accelerating at 140 miles an hour. So that's fast enough out of a 15, 17, 18 year old bandit. At least for me, it is. I had it on, got it on the GPS, and took a picture of that because it was. I didn't know it would run that fast, and I just it just kept climbing. But I think his is probably in the 150 range. And I know for a fact that when we twist them on, regardless of gear, it'll pull me. Oh well. I did not go over that double yellow line. The double yellow line was in the wrong place. That's got to be it.
got to look at my GPS to see how far we were from uh, Marinci. So, I ain't going to take time to look down and try to focus. I just look down to see how fast I'm going and things like that. Got a little slow on that one. I wonder if he lost concentration. Very unlike him. That's what I meant back there. We stopped. We had to kind of catch our breaths and breaths and our let our minds catch up. I still think I wish I had a copy of Gene Autry's Riding Through the Canyon. I think that would be just cool as heck for background music to this. But it's probably copy copyrighted and I'll probably end up getting in YouTube jail for doing something wrong. So we'll just not worry about it. Look at that over to the right. That is just spectacular. you need to say, look at that! Whoops! I gotta get home. I'm gonna have to edit all these videos. At this stage of the game, I don't know what's good and what's bad. I haven't had time to check them out. I did bring a tablet. Just uh, haven't had time. So I guess probably got some pretty darn good ones. I guess probably got some pretty damn bad ones. But I'll spend the next week and a half, two weeks, trying to get them edited and up. Hopefully, in some kind of semblance of order. some guys on YouTube and I they're all right every one of them says it takes longer to edit them than it does to shoot them and I'm still learning how to edit them so that's another problem and at my age that's a slow learn they always told me I was slow to learn and quick to forget didn't they, Bud Rock Hole? I'm hoping this video turns out pretty good. If this one does, because this is not going to be the longest one, I'm going to try to put it up on uh, Facebook. Maybe, maybe I can get some looks. I said on one of the other videos, Charles is a senior member at 81, and I'm the junior member at, at 76, so hello there. I don't think we're doing too shabby for a couple of old farts.
an octogenarian and a septuagenarian. Uh, those are $5 words, folks. If there's anybody behind us or not, but so far we ain't been past. Nobody, nobody behind us blowing their horn telling us to move over. Anyway, I have seen videos of people riding up and down this thing that the people behind them trying to pass. seen a true switchback in a little while. I wonder if we were just about out of them. There were a couple back up the hill that were uh, pretty tight. Five and ten mile an hour, for me anyway. I don't know what Charles was doing. He was long gone. He does not have a camera on his bike, so we had one hooked up and we had so much vibration we just took it off. I think the next time I come up here I'm going to mount three or four cameras on this thing so I can try to get some better shots. That little dash camera you, see, you can probably see there is an ion. It takes marvelous pictures. Hoping I get some good stuff out of it. I got it hooked up to a, a char, uh, an outlet on the bike, so hopefully it doesn't run out of battery power. I got a 32 gig uh, SD card, so that ought to get me all the way down the mountain. And I'll have that to edit in with this this one when I get home. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, the GoPro, between the GoPro and the Ion, I ought to, should have some pretty decent pictures. Cross my fingers and hope, hope, hope. Come through here last year, I had my GoPro on and another dash camera and somewhere I lost about 99% of the video. I don't remember if my batteries were down. I know I didn't have the uh, dash cam hooked up to a power outlet then. So since then I've been uh, doing a little bit of experimenting, shall we say. Well, it looks like we're getting into the mine. It's that big copper mine in Marinci and uh, Clifton. God, I couldn't think of the name of Clifton. So anyway, I know there's an overlook down here a little further. I'm going to see if I can get ahead of Charles before too much longer. Because I don't know if he knows about it. I kind of doubt it. Got him. Now I can always say I passed him on the road on uh, Route 666. Back in the 60s, there was a novice that uh, went down to Daytona talking about how he had passed Gary Nixon. Well, he passed Gary Nixon out on uh, Route 75. He didn't pass him on the racetrack, but it was a good story while it lasted. This is definitely the largest copper mine in the state of Colorado, and I read somewhere that this thing has most, uh, the largest amount of copper reserves of any mine in the country. And I'm thinking it's in the top three or four of the largest mines in the world. This thing is huge. They're mining on both sides of the road. I said one time, how do you move a mountain? You look at here, they've moved it from one spot to another. I think that pile there is part of the new mountain. That overlook where we're going to stop, I'll, I'll 
try to get some pictures. They moved a mountain out of there and stacked it up somewhere. I was here, like I said, I stopped here last year and was just absolutely blown away. If you think that hole in uh, Bisbee was big, this thing is huge. Mining on both sides of the highway. All the way in, too. I mean, this thing runs all the way into Clifton and even, I think, a little bit south after we get there. I have, until I had seen this, I had never seen anything like it. I know there's some open pit gold mines down around the globe, but nothing compares to this. <coughs> mm. Roots getting scratchy again. It's because I talk too much. As I said, absolutely amazing. Not very pretty, of course. I imagine a hundred years from now when they get it all, all the copper out of it and get it reclaimed, it'll be kind of cool looking. Pretty much like the rest of the mountains. Watch me overshoot that damn overlook. That would be enough to piss off the Pope. Make a grown man cry. got to say about it. Unflippin' real. There we go. Wasn't sure if I had enough brakes to get that thing stopped. Uh, after coming down the mountain, you never can tell. And I did use them a lot. it here and I'll take some photos and splice them in.